So when I originally set out to make this video, I had thought that this was just going to be a really quick topic, a fun little rant where I pick some low hanging fruit and do a bit of complaining about a version of Minecraft that admittedly has a few issues with it. But for this video, I of course had to actually play Bedrock Edition so I could one, get an idea for myself of how big of a deal some of these issues are, and two, give Bedrock Edition a chance to change my mind. Who knows, maybe if I played a world all the way through, I might change my mind about it. I might actually really like this version of the game, maybe even more so than Java Edition. Considering you've clicked on this video and have presumably read the title and seen the thumbnail, that is not what happened at all. For the past three weeks, I have spent my time playing Minecraft Bedrock, and over this period of time, I've only grown more and more annoyed with the issues that plague this version of the game. Do I think the game is in any way unplayable? No. However, comparing the Bedrock Edition to the Java Edition of the game has been an interesting experience to say the least. I believe that after my time playing, I have narrowed down the single largest issue with this version of the game and why it sucks compared to the Java version. Before I get into explaining that, there are two things I need to get out of the way. First, this video is sponsored by ExpressVPN, but more on that in a bit. Secondly, for those who don't really know much about Minecraft, you might be wondering what a Bedrock Edition or Java Edition even is. So let me provide some context. The Java Edition of Minecraft refers to the original version of the game released onto PC back in 2011, or like 2009 if you want to count all the alpha and beta versions of the game. This version of the game was was and has since been developed on Java, hence the name. You don't need to know everything about Java. What's important is that once Mojang decided they wanted to release Minecraft onto your phone or consoles like the Xbox 360 or even the 3DS, wow, Minecraft really made it everywhere. They couldn't use Java to develop the game because these consoles are closed platforms and the companies who create the software for those consoles control every single application allowed onto the console. This meant that they needed to rebuild Minecraft from the ground up in an entirely different coding language in order to port it to other consoles. And this is where the better Bedrock Edition comes into play. Minecraft Bedrock Edition is a version of the game that is currently available on pretty much everything that people play on in the modern day. It's actually the best selling version of the game, although you might not believe it considering the Java edition of the game is the version that gets the most popularity with content creators all over YouTube. On paper, Bedrock should be the most popular version of Minecraft. Everyone watching this video should have left behind Java edition once they announced the Better Together update and we'd all be happy. Bedrock has better performance, crossplay between every single console it's on, and you can start up a multiplayer server for free with your friends without having to look up a YouTube tutorial on how to port forward. As we know, however, not everyone's inclined to switch to Bedrock, because as big as these advantages are, this is pretty much the end for the list of advantages for Bedrock. One of the first things I encountered on my journey into Bedrock is that the version of the Minecraft launcher I use actually doesn't support Bedrock anymore. Mojang actually released a new version of the Minecraft launcher last year, available to download through the Microsoft Store, that's red flag number one by the way, number two being that you'd be hard pressed to tell the fucking difference between the two. It's literally the same launcher. I couldn't even launch both of them at the same time to show you how they look the same because Windows 10 thinks they're the same program. Because they are. The biggest difference you could find here is the new launcher's logo, which just looks worse. You don't even really need the new launcher to play Bedrock because Bedrock has a shortcut on your desktop that just bypasses the launcher entirely. The launcher quite literally only benefits people playing through Game Pass. But whatever. Ignore the new launcher, open the game, check out this menu screen. There's this cute little animation for the marketplace. I have more things to say about this later. For now, I at least appreciate the animation. New World. Survive survival, hard, name the world, and we're in. First thing I did was mess around with the sky getting darker when you look directly at the sun. Kind of a fun thing to include. You also might notice that I'm actually able to see the terrain across this massive lake without my gameplay looking like it was recorded on an actual potato. See, even with my buff as fuck PC, loading more than 16 chunks on Java gives my computer a stroke. I mentioned this earlier, but I didn't realize just how good this felt until I hopped in game and experienced this. It's actually so sick to be able to play the game while seeing land that far in the distance. It makes Minecraft feel a lot more vast kind of like I've only really explored a small part of the world and it kind of encourages me to go out and see what's over there. A lot of my first couple of days with Bedrock Edition was just playing as I normally would. It was really calming to revisit the game, even if it was a different version, and go through the motions of a survival world. I mean, the survival world I have currently is a couple years old already, so it's been a minute since I've had to worry about not having netherite armor or not being able to fly anywhere without an elytra. I even turned off my own music a lot of the time and let the silky smooth noises of C418's soundtrack play while I went about chopping wood, exploring, or farming wheat for my cows. The only weird things I had to deal with so far were the version differences I encountered throughout my playthrough. Steve blinks, it's genuinely so weird. Ideally you'd want the differences between Java and Bedrock to be so minor that all of these other consoles feel like they're getting the exact same Minecraft experience as someone they'd see play Java version would have. But that really isn't the case. A lot of it is just minor stuff. The crafting recipe for a boat, for whatever reason, now just includes a shovel. They're supposed to be the oars, but this just seems like such an unnecessary difference between Java that I'm shocked they felt needed to be added into the game. There's also a lot of little extras to world generation thrown around the game. Trees now might have vines on them, or you might come across a fallen tree. I'm just left confused.
confused as to why these differences even exist when it's either such a weird, unnecessary change that it feels like a difference for the sake of Bedrock Edition being able to say, look, we're different from Java, check this out, or it's such a small change that you're left to wonder why this just isn't in Java Edition in the first place. I'm not pretending that Java Edition isn't literally held together by a ball of tape and the developer's tears. Hell, here's a list of issues with Java Edition. First, this video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. An issue I've always had with Minecraft Java is that whenever I try to connect to a Realm server, I get kicked because of this weird error code. I genuinely have no clue why this happens, it's only with Minecraft Realm servers. Anyways, to actually play on Realms with my friends, I use ExpressVPN. With just two clicks and 20 seconds of my time, I've opened up the app and I'm connected to the fastest servers in my area, and I'm ready to play with my friends, hassle-free, quick and easy, just as a program should be. For those who don't play Minecraft, you could always use ExpressVPN to watch Netflix shows not available in your own country from anywhere on a multitude of different devices or operating systems, or you could just use it to browse the internet anonymously. Up to you. Considering it's the number one rated VPN provider by CNET, The Verge, Wired, TechRadar, and more, you can expect the fastest speeds by being connected to premium servers, and you can expect 24-7 customer support to answer any question at any moment within seconds. Click the link in the description, expressvpn.com slash strixo, to learn more and to find out how you can get three months free. Second, as I mentioned earlier, the game runs terribly the moment you go over 16 chunks of render distance, regardless of how good your computer is, mostly due to it being a Java game. If you aren't using third-party mods to increase your FPS like Optifine or Sodium, you're actively making your experience worse. Third, it took nearly seven years for Minecraft to create a proper lighting system that doesn't randomly create lighting glitches everywhere that require a block update to fix. Fourth isn't actually an issue, I just wanted to complain about not being able to rebind hiding my hotbar and the F3 debug menu, and only being able to rebind the screenshot button. Obviously, I'm not going to rebind my screenshot button ever, so whenever I go to press F3 or F1, there's a small chance I just fat finger F2 instead. So here's a small montage of me accidentally screenshotting stuff in Minecraft because I don't have a transition. As I got deeper into Bedrock Edition, I began to notice just how much the entire experience of the game is different because of the combat system. Back in early 2016, Minecraft Java Edition got an updated combat system in what is probably Minecraft's most controversial update ever released. And with it, changed the combat to include timed charge attacks, a shield, and damage changes between the axe and the sword. Bedrock never received this update. And because of it, pretty much every addition to the game past 1.9 that had to do with combat was effectively made useless. 1.9 adds dual wielding to the game and has a multitude of uses with building and mining outside of combat, but because Bedrock only chose to add parts of the combat update and exclude others, you can dual wield in Bedrock a total of like five fucking items. Shields are essentially useless the moment you get armor. They're even more useless when you get a totem. I swear Mojang knows they're useless too because you can't even put banners on shields in this version of the game. Without being able to dual wield things like tools or torches, it makes actions like healing mending items or strip mining needlessly just a tiny bit more annoying. And while we're talking about combat, we have to talk about the behavior behavior of mobs in this version of the game. I want to say it's because of balancing changes that Mojang made to the game that is the reason for a lot of this, but mob spawns in this game work differently than they do in Java. The combat is kind of just easier, I think that much is apparent from the footage, so what Bedrock does is just spawn mobs more frequently and with more mobs per spawn, if that makes sense. The issue is that they kind of just shove four of the same mob spawn onto the same block and let Bedrock's physics just explode them outwards once you get close enough to them. This doesn't even mention how the mobs lag when they move. Actually, a lot of shit lags in this game if I'm going to be honest. When I said that the game doesn't have a stroke going past 16 chunks, I really did mean it, but my overall gameplay experience with Java is smoother. I think a good way I can describe this is, imagine Java is like playing on your own survival world. Bedrock is like playing multiplayer ran by the friend who's the only one who knows how to port forward and set up a server, but their internet blows. Mobs just lag and move weirdly for seemingly no reason. Throwing an enderpearl in this game feels actually scary because the arc of the throw is different than Java. All traveling entities are different than Java. Arrows might as well be hit scan, and the return to sender achievement is actually challenging now only because the fireballs lag and jerk their way towards me. But the thing that annoyed me the most out of all this was the actual mob behavior being seemingly broken or exceptionally more stupid than Java. Endermen in this version of the game are a fucking nightmare. In Java edition, they run towards you after you hit them, and sometimes they'll teleport after being hit. In Bedrock, it is guaranteed that an Enderman will teleport away when it's hit, but after teleporting away, it will stop being mad at you, so your chance to get enderpearls is just gone. The supreme example of mob behavior being broken is the Ender 
Ender Dragon fight. Now don't get me confused. This isn't to say that the Ender Dragon fight on Java isn't a goddamn snooze fest. My original plan for this video was to make a whole joke about fighting the Ender Dragon. I went into the marketplace, bought some funny stupid little items, and then went into the end thinking I was going to get a bit of footage of the dragon flinging me into the air so I could pretend like it was interesting for content. I didn't even break all of the end crystals healing the dragon. It just let me kill it with a bow. Throughout the countless times on Java Edition I've beaten the Ender Dragon, never have I been able to do it without at least removing all of the end crystals first. I don't know if this is just a skill issue on the dragon's part, or perhaps I'm playing out of my mind, or maybe I just always sucked on Java. But I didn't even get to make my funny joke about buying cosmetics in the marketplace that I am 90% sure weren't given approval by the people or IPs they were using to sell some of these skins. Also, I would mention the wither here, but I ran out of time for the script of this video. Future Strixo will tell you how the wither fight went. With this playthrough of the game in mind, the reason I've narrowed down for Minecraft Bedrock absolutely sucking compared to the Java edition of the game is that it's a mobile game at its heart. Some concessions from being a mobile game that Bedrock has brought in are an objective good. The ability for people to play on their phones with friends who have consoles or computers is amazing, and the FPS optimizations for mobile have made the game much more stable on computer than its Java counterpart. I've talked about this all video, but exploring the end islands with like 70 chunks loaded is a fucking dream come true. I can actually see end cities in the distance instead of randomly stumbling across one in the void. However, these concessions bring downsides. It would be extremely awkward to strip mine on mobile touch controls with a pickaxe in your main hand and torches in your offhand, so it's not in the game. Java's current combat with cooldowns and encouraged weapon swapping with the shield mechanics would be really awkward to use on a mobile device, so it's not in the game. Using a bow or throwing ender pearls or being hit by gassed fireballs would all be really annoying things to deal with on mobile, so these things are slowed down or made easier to deal with. Fighting an enderman as they are on Java on a mobile device would probably be annoying, so they teleport away from you more often to give you breathing room and lose their aggro much easier to let you heal a bit. Which by the way, it takes fucking forever on this version of the game. I've really been taking that Java regeneration for granted. The swimming animations in the aquatic update for Minecraft Java would be weird to experience and trigger on mobile. They're still in the game, but just swimming the classic way by holding spacebar and W above water is, I'm pretty sure, faster? Or at the very least, the same speed as the swimming animation. One of the ways I've always been able to tell someone is playing Bedrock is by the look of the water. It's less opaque. It looks weird. I feel like it was a concession made to help FPS on Bedrock, but I hate how it looks and how the lava doesn't even have a moving texture, but water does. These are two of the biggest nitpicks in the world, but the lava kind of just transitions downwards. The water moves normally. I can't even have my moving lava gif on Bedrock, man. They made this shit look like an interpolated 60 FPS anime video. We all saw this coming. The biggest mobile feeling feature in Bedrock is the marketplace. This is already a hot topic when it comes to Java versus Bedrock, so to make myself clear, I am in no place to complain about buying cosmetics for a game. My CSGO inventory is public. It's kind of over for me. My issue with it overall is its implementation and lack of a very specific consumer protection feature. Once you click to purchase an item on the marketplace, there's no pop-up asking if you're sure you want to purchase the item. With the UI built the way it is, it's probably a bit difficult to misclick this button, but it can still happen. It definitely shouldn't be able to happen. The way the marketplace is set up currently, not to rag on the developers of this stuff because the implementation is definitely Mojang's fault, but it just seems really lame. I would be paying actual real money to download Minecraft maps, which I can do for free on Java Edition, and for the specific map add-ons they add to their worlds, they're locked to that world and I can't take them anywhere outside of the world I buy on the marketplace. Imagine if every single Gmod add-on available on the Steam Workshop was restricted to its own version of GM Big City that comes with that add-on, and also costs like $4 each. It would be a train wreck. Another small set of complaints and nitpicks I have that didn't really fit into any general section include the pretty much radio silence on Bedrock RTX for consoles. Haven't looked into it too much because I don't own a current gen console, but for a brief period earlier this year, I guess it became available and then was seemingly just removed? Mojang says it was a mistake in the first place to be added to the preview build, just really weird in general. View bobbing is insane on Bedrock, someone needs to turn this shit down. On Java, it's like a slight thing, but on Bedrock, hands fucking move. A lot of Minecraft Java's, what I can call jank, didn't really make its way over to Bedrock, and for someone who's played Java for years, it's noticeable that even just the movement feels off. Other things like Java's numerous redstone glitches that have pretty much just become features used to create some incredible works are impossible without something called quasi-connectivity. If you don't know what that means, it basically just allows this to happen. 
This is used in a countless amount of Java Redstone builds that are insanely popular. Bedrock gets the ability to move containers with pistons, but I don't really think it's a fair trade. If you disagree with me, that's okay. There's no hardcore difficulty in the game, which I would probably say is one of the biggest reasons it's completely overshadowed by the Java edition in terms of content on YouTube. You look at one of the most popular trends with Minecraft content and it's, I survived 100 days in hardcore Minecraft. Bedrock is just kind of locked out of doing this with no official reason as to why from Mojang. Finally, to end these nitpicks, there's no way to toggle a UI that is more comfortable to use on a PC. The current UI for PC is okay. Much prefer the Java UI though. We're at the point that I think Minecraft's additions are beginning to outgrow what's good for a mobile platform. And I think Bedrock would be much better off by making the mobile edition of the game its own thing again in the future like it used to be. I'm not saying it's a bad thing because mobile players get to play Minecraft too. They deserve to play Minecraft as we do. I just think that with the countless amount of Reddit threads I saw while researching talking about how laggy Minecraft Bedrock on mobile is becoming, we're approaching the point where Minecraft on mobile is kind of just holding Bedrock back and both parties would be happier with a split. When I opened up Minecraft to get more footage for this video, I was prompted to answer the question, are you enjoying Minecraft? Obviously doing the mobile game thing where it wants me to say yes and then rate this version of the game. I look back on my experience with the game overall. The memories with my pet panda trapped in his fence prison, forced to eat bamboo. And I said, fuck no. I have the luxury of being able to play Java Edition. None of my friends play on it and I don't enjoy playing it either. So this world and everything in it is staying right here and I'm never opening up Bedrock again. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing liking the video or checking out more videos on things that suck.